What's going on, BB UK fans? Once again, it is your host, Arachnid Soul, with a best bits review. Please feel free to follow me at Arachnid Soul on Twitter. And if you like this podcast, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and leave a comment. Hell, if you want to join me on the podcast, let me know. Maybe I'll have you on. Anyway, it is day number 26 in the house. It's Girl Power Week, which means Jale, Kimberly, Ashley, Helen, and someone I cannot stand, Danielle. Please get Danielle out of the house, but these ladies have the power. It also means that all of the lads, all of the guys in the house are on the chopping block and potentially might get evicted this week. Early on, we saw that there was this rivalry, this feud between Ash and Ashley, two people I thought would be really laid back in the house. Ashley, I don't know, I guess she thought she was on American Big Brother, which I will also be reviewing pretty soon. Ashley thought she was on American Big Brother. She formed her little group, her little clique, her little alliance. She decided that this week her goal was to pretty much get Ash out of the house. She doesn't care if Helen, Ash's best friend in the house, is standing in the way. And we're going to find out a little bit later on if Ashley was successful at this. One thing I want to point out is that Hurricane Helen has been blowing in that house. Oh, I I mean figuratively, people. Nothing has happened between her and Ash. Hurricane Helen has been blowing in that house, and Big Brother has given her a formal warning, telling her that she's, she's just not up to standards. And she might get sent home if she does anything else, if she yells at someone and says the wrong thing, if she physically tries to impose her will on someone ten times smaller than her, like Matthew, she might get sent home. With that said, let's talk about a meeting, a secret meeting that took place. Danielle and Ashley decided they were going to get Jale and Kimberly alone in a room without Helen, and they were basically going to throw Ash to the wolves. Jale, I don't think, picked up on what was going on, and she got on board with it. So they basically decided early on, four of the five women, that yeah, Ash probably should go home, and he should at least be one of the guys who they didn't save from the block. Helen has not found out about this. What is Helen going to do when she finds out that this happened? Is she going to blow up on Ashley, the ringleader, the mastermind? Is she going to blow up on Danielle, a devout Catholic, but somehow oddly also the most judgmental person in the house? At the same time, will Helen blow up on two of her best friends, Kimberly and actually now kind of Jale? We remember that bullying thing from a couple of weeks ago, but I think for the most part, Helen and Jale have put that behind them. In any case, let's talk about the guys in the house. First of all, the women had to go into a room and had to decide which three guys in the house they were going to save from eviction. Now, the guys had a chance to get up and make a speech and You know, if you guys haven't heard that classic I Have a Dream speech from Martin Luther King that changed the United States and and changed the greater part of the world, not only for, you know, African Americans, but also for women and Native Americans and, you know, to some degree gay people and a bunch of other people, you really, I don't know, kind of as a human should hear that before you die. But there was another I Dream, I Have a Dream speech that happened in history. It, it was a little bit smaller, it was somewhat insignificant, but it was certainly more comical, and that was Winston's I Have a Dream speech. Winston giving an I Have a Dream speech to try to save himself from going home. One of the funniest guys, if not the funniest guy, in the Big Brother house. I love Winston. I'm sure you love Winston. Everybody loves Winston. He might have some issues, you know, aiming at times, but he's a funny guy, he's a chilled guy, I don't know what to say. Then we can talk about Marlon who went up there. Marlon does not like to be judged, he doesn't like public speaking. He went up there, he gave his speech, we actually saw his best friend in the house, Jale, almost break down, almost lose it, and almost start crying, and maybe she did a little bit. And after the speech, Marlon left, and when he went into the backyard, he then beelined right into the bedroom, slammed the door open, jumped into bed, pulled the sheets over himself. Um, 
And then we've got to talk about my boy Chris, the second funniest guy in the house. How do you not love Chris? Probably, you know, everybody's second favorite housemate, maybe now after Winston, if I'm reading it correctly. Anyway, Chris went up there and he basically talked about how last year was a hard year for him and he actually contemplated suicide to some degree. Helen broke down and it was nice later on to see Helen actually consoling Chris outside in the backyard and kind of seeing a, a nicer side of Helen that maybe we haven't seen much of since night one. I remember on night one when Pauline gave Helen that bye to the finals and we just all kind of looked at Helen and thought, okay, she seems like a nice average, you know, woman. She, you know, maybe we like the fact that she's going to the finals. Then she turned into a bully. Will this be the kind of reemergence of the softer, gentler, more kind side of Helen? Only time will tell. In any case, Stephen got up there. And you know, when Stephen gets up there, the term I give him is that Stephen holds court. It doesn't matter if he's talking to 10 people or one person. The podium is his. He gets on his soapbox. He holds court. He almost put the women to sleep. Obviously, he couldn't put Kimberly to sleep because uh, Kimberly is usually the one who puts people to sleep. In any case, Winston was perfectly safe. Kimberly, with with no personality, really, the kind of the American girl who sits on the fence, was worried that she'd have to go to bat form, and when she realized she didn't in the female deliberations, decided to say nothing like she usually doesn't. It doesn't matter anyway, because when she says something, it's boring. And don't get me wrong, I like Kimberly. She seems like a really intelligent girl, but it's just, it's nap time once she starts talking. So... We move on now to which three of the guys the women decided to save. They decided to save young, small Chris. Not Christmas, as they're called. I don't know. If, if that's like a, a UK thing, please let me know. Are you supposed to call people with the name Christopher Christmas? Is that a UK thing, or is that just his nickname? I have no idea. Anyway, they didn't save Christmas, a.k.a. Christopher. They saved small Chris, um... And they also decided to save Marlon, which was kind of surprising, but I guess he won them over just enough to stay in there. And But I think also they saved Marlon because Marlon might have been going home had he stayed on the block. And like I said, Danielle and Ashley are determined to get Ash out of the house. Steven was saved which Steven always has a breakdown. Every week, Steven's going to have that breakdown. You've seen it. He puts the hands on the face and... Oh, I just want to hear him say it one more time. What was it that your grandfather always told you, Stephen? Because we've only heard it 60 times so far this summer in the past three and a half weeks. We need to hear it again. We, we haven't heard it enough. In any case, young Christopher, Marlon, and Stephen are safe, which means that Mark, who, in my opinion, does have a bye to the finals, Mark freaked out. Mark, you should have seen his eyebrows. They, they, were, they were standing up. They were bushy. He looked excited. Uh, actually, that kind of means Mark just looked the exact same way he always looks. We're going to have to do eyebrow gate, by the way, and do a whole podcast on the makeover job that Mark gave to Jale. The funniest thing that has happened this summer. Jale, with those eyebrows, Mark, what were you thinking? In any case, Mark is on the block. Christmas, a.k.a. Christopher, is on the block. And guess what, Mark and Christmas, you're not going home. Another guy who's not going home and knows he's not going home and just kind of had a laugh about it, really, when he figured out he was on the block, Winston. Winston knows he's not going home. He's the class clown. He's the most laid back. He, he, he's got it all. I mean, if you're a guy and you look at Winston, he makes you laugh. If you're a girl and you look at Winston, maybe you're attracted to him. I don't know. But he, he's not bothering anybody. The other person on the block, unfortunately, yes, is Ash. Ash is on the block. Ash is the target. I believe Ash is going home this week. Matthew thinks he's going home this week. I would love to see Matthew go home this week because there's something about Matthew that just rubs me the wrong way. He's, he's, he's arrogant, he's pompous, he's judgmental, not quite as much as Danielle, but, you know, he's got his issues as well. I think Ash will go home this week, and I think it's a case of guilt by association. I feel that Ash was booed wrongfully last week 
purely because he's friends with Helen. Helen hasn't done anything to upset Ash. Ash hasn't done anything to uh, to upset Helen, and there's some kind of spark between them. I mean, if Ash does leave, I hope he at least gives Helen a kiss on the lips before he walks out. In any case, Ash has had a week where, you know, we saw the comment when Jale jumped in the pool and Ash said, Hey, Jale, put some of that water back in the pool. He called her a maggot. He has gone off a little bit. He, you know, didn't want to hear any of Toya's BS, and aren't we glad Toya's gone? In any case, I believe Ash will probably go this week, but if you can hear me, if you're within the sound of my voice, please get Matthew out. We need to get Matthew out, and we need to start focusing on getting Danielle out. Do not let Danielle with her judgmental thoughts and her little going into the corner, being one of the gossip girls. That's another podcast we've got coming up. Don't let her ruin the whole summer. In any case, it has been your boy, Arachnid Soul. Follow me on Twitter, at Arachnid Soul. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave a comment, and let me know if you want to be on this podcast. Intellectual and voracious as always. Thank you all. Catch me next time on the Best Bits Review. And good night.